I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commandments, commands on, of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koholeth. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. What profit has man from all the labor which he toils at under the sun? One generation passes and another comes, but the world forever stays. The sun rises and the sun goes down. Then it presses on to the place where it rises. Blowing now toward the south, then toward the north, the wind turns again and again, resuming its rounds. All rivers go to the sea, yet never does the sea become full. To the place where they go, the rivers keep on going. All speech is labored. There is nothing one can say. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear satisfied with hearing. What has been, that will be. What has been done, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. There is no remembrance of the men of old, nor of those to come will there be any remembrance among those who come after them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. 
Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. And he kept trying to see him. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. It may sound strange to us here, but there are a variety of reasons why people take an interest in religion other than to grow in sanctity. Some have only an intellectual interest. For instance, a person may find religion fascinating in its social and psychological aspects, and their attention is drawn by curiosity regarding people's behavior. Others might be led into it by circumstances. Perhaps they landed a job as a parochial school teacher, and their visible practice of religion is simply a matter of job security. An eager fiancé may develop an interest in Christianity after learning of its necessity in securing the approval of his future in-laws. In these examples and many others we can imagine, the figure of our Lord may become important to a person only under a certain aspect. But it is vital for our faith that it be the right aspect. In view of our Lord's divinity and his express commands, if that aspect is a mere worldly interest, we can hardly expect our Lord to approve. Our faith may not begin with such worldly aspects, but it can certainly be ended by them, including for priests, religious, and others whose lives revolve around religion. The danger is that God and the things of God can slowly cease to be regarded as objects of love and grow to be merely objects of interest or comfortable routine. In our gospel today, we're told that Herod the Tetrarch heard about our Lord and his ministry and wanted to see him. Our Lord piqued his curiosity and aroused his concern. Herod realized he needed more reliable information than the opinions he was hearing. Therefore, he wanted to see and judge this miracle worker for himself. Normally, our Lord was delighted 
to indulge the questions and concerns of those he ministered to, which included anyone who would listen to him. He willingly taught them by his words of wisdom, or at least by parable, if their faith was too weak to accept the unveiled truth. Yet, our Lord would have nothing to do with Herod. He would not go to see him, and when our Lord was brought before him in the midst of his passion, he refused to say even one word to him. He did speak with Pontius Pilate, who had him nearly scourged to death, but not to Herod. Why not? There is only one reason our Lord would refuse to speak to anyone, and that is when he knows his words would only serve to harden their heart further and to put their soul in an even worse state than it already is. This can occur when a satanic pride takes hold of a person and causes them to refuse to consider or even to listen to another person trying to make a relevant contribution to their outlook. This stubbornness is commonly seen today in victims of our progressive media's brainwashing, who take any criticism of their position as a justification for a personal attack on the critic, even if that critic is God himself. To receive our Lord's mercy, it is necessary at the very least that one is willing to listen. Outside of Herod and some of the Pharisees, our Lord found this willingness in everyone who sought him out. We too must be sure we are honestly listening to our Lord himself rather than merely being tuned in to some fringe benefit of our religion. Although we may not double down on our error when appeals of logic, law, or common sense are presented, nevertheless, if our primary reason for practicing religion remains something other than advancing in divine intimacy, we too could be on that path of isolating ourselves from God's mercy. No sin of ours, however grave, is an obstacle to him, but a refusal to even listen to the messenger sent by him is to willfully blind ourselves, which is essentially the sin against the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that we would get to see our Lord in the fullest sense possible, with the eyes of faith in this life and face to face in heaven. Trusting in God's love, we bring our needs to him with trust and confidence. For the church, may God's love shine through us as he continues to draw all people to himself. Let us pray to the Lord. For public authorities, may the Holy Spirit help them in fulfilling their duties with integrity and honesty. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christians throughout the world who are persecuted for their faith, may God strengthen and encourage them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parishioners, may God instill in us a sense of purpose and mission, inspire, <clears throat> inspiring us in all we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, May God, in his intimate mercy, bring them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the McKibben family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, your power is greater than we can imagine. 
Please hear our prayers this day and answer them in your wisdom, according to your will, and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess in your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.